What's going on, traders? Sean Kozak here, tuning in again with Neural Street Trading Academy, and welcome to another Trade Room Recap. If you're new to Neural Street, each day what we try to do is put on recap videos to go over the trade setups that we take, the systems, the different indicators that we trade, and then also the activity that took place in our trading room. Now, first things first, click subscribe, turn the notification bell on, and make sure that if you have questions, you leave them in the chat box so that we can get social with you. Now, today was a pretty active day. We had a lot of trade setups. I took trades on the S&P. I took trades on oil. Uh, I missed some trades on the euro. Uh, I actually just got filled on a Russell trade. We'll see how that one plays out here. Uh, the big thing here to know is that we have several different setups that we trade. We have several different systems that we teach on. And the goal is to make sure that you understand those trades and understand the purpose behind them and some of the different things that we do in our classroom. Now, today was a very active day. And uh, the reason for that is a lot of levels are being hit, a lot of follow through. Uh, the market was responding well to volume areas. So uh, we'll have to take a look at some of those executions. And, uh, and if you like trading and if you like what we do here, make sure you give us a thumbs up because I want to make sure that we can help you and that we can also make sure that you understand some of the different concepts that we're doing make sure you check out our trade room below there's a link you can definitely join us and uh, that'll be a good place for you to get started so you can understand how to get started in our classrooms all right traders so let's jump on the charts i want to show you those trades let's see if the the russell gives me some follow through during the recap and then uh, let's go over and take a look at some of those trades All right, traders, so welcome back. What I want to do is I want to take a look at the S&P market first. So the S&P market, let's go over here and take a look here. I had some key levels mapped out on the S&P, and uh, we'll take a look at it. We'll go through and take a look. There was these areas that I had circled on my charts. These were areas I was looking at taking shorts in, and uh, these are the areas. I missed this trade up here. I did take a short down here and I passed on this one due to a retest entry. So this was key areas for us. The, the other trades that I wanna take a look at down here was up here on the Russell trades. These were some areas of imbalances on the order flow. This was a key area where we were looking at trades. I did not take these trades because of the fact that the market just uh, got there and I was actually in other positions at the time. So I didn't get a chance to catch those. Both those trades actually hit targets. We'll go and take a look at the smaller time frame. We'll take a look at the reactions on those as well. Uh, the other thing I want to take a look at is a crude oil. Crude oil was a really killer market today. I took the long and the short. I got targets on both those trades. So this trade down here, I caught the low. I was able to get out at both those exits. I caught the high. I was able to scalp out. I got kicked out on the break even before I got my second target. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But you can see that these were auction levels that were basically dictated by uh, the, the profiles. So I was actually looking at some of the areas up here on oil. And these were, these were auction levels off of high volume locations where the market rotated heavily off the POC, off these areas. And these are definitely areas where I'd like to see some follow through. And that's exactly what we did. We took those areas and we took those trades. Now, the other trade that I missed, and it was kind of a big trade, was the euro. I missed the short off the high up here. Uh, while I was in the, the crude oil trade, I didn't catch it. So this was an area where I had played out and it was actually a really great trade. And uh, what's really nice about it is that these levels were we're able to plan them in advance and uh, let's just see if I can get the Russell trade here the Russell trade see this is an auction level so I'll talk about a play-by-play -play. we were actually looking at this Russell trade uh, this morning and the Russell's a weaker market so if this market can lift we should see some follow-through in some of the other markets and uh, let's wait and see if the, the stop loss, if the if this market can hit my first target at 14 ticks, then what'll happen is I will move my stop to break even and we, we can see a reaction here. So it's coming up. I'm gonna move my stop to break even now just in case it doesn't touch the average up here. I'm gonna try to get my, my target filled a little bit sooner because if they come in and it uh, looks like they wanna come back and, and retrace off that average. So I'm gonna try to get filled here on that, that first target. Let's see if I can drag down a little bit more. And uh, looks like they might kick me out before they try it. Let's see if they can punch up here. It'll be nice to get the target here. And hopefully they don't retrace down before they kick me out on break even. We'll have to see. 
And sometimes that happens in strong bearish markets like that. It, it comes up and it hits the average. The trend average gets pegged before the target gets filled and, and they come in, they don't kick through. And, and yeah, it looks like they're going to kick me out on break even. So this might just be a break even trade for me, depending on how they react off this order flow here. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. And the key here is that this is an auction level. This is an auction level that ultimately is defined by profiles. So the, the reality of this trade is that it's a level. Let's take a look here and see if I can at least get some follow through here. Come on, guys. Let's try to lift up here and get at least a test of the, the average. It is in a strong downtrend right now. So this market is uh, definitely facing, um, facing a little bit of bearish price action. And so uh, we'll see if we can kick into the average. <clears throat> There it is. Let's try it. Try it again. Second time. Didn't get the fill. Let's try it. Order filled. Got the target. So that was a nice trade right there. Let's wait and see if we can actually come up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this trade run to a bigger target. And uh, let's take a look at where the high volume is. This is high volume here. And I'm going to try to come up to test the higher volume if they can lift up here. The big thing would be for us to try to get a test of the next higher volume note if they can come up. If they come back and kick my stop, then so be it. But the, the big thing here is let's merge these back. Let's merge all these auctions back. And this is kind of live trading on the recap. And let's take a look where the high volume starts. The high volume on this day actually kicks in here. Uh, it kicks in right here. So my target, I'm going to try to get a bigger target up here if we can get the follow through. That'd be a good place for it. Pass through that low volume. And uh, I already got my second target, my first target at that high volume. But it, the, the the bearish price action, there, there's a lot of expectation for them to sell off here, just mainly because it's counter-directional trading. And uh, I'm, I'm not looking for massive follow-through unless the market lifts really quickly here. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll come down to test the auction level before they lift up. You never know that, though. Sometimes the market does some some really random things, especially on the Russell. It can be pretty pretty substantial here. And uh, the key about this area is it's all about the auction. So this was all about the auction. And what it was, was a major level of, of point of control that created a strong lift here. So there was a really, really big strong lift here that created a really, really strong rally. Now there's resistance here. That's why the market stopped here. But if we can trade through that without getting kicked out here, which they're probably going to come down to hit again. Uh, because they're rejecting out of that low volume. So Order it, canceled. Yeah, so they, they never gave me the follow through, so I got T1. That's fine. But the concept here is that, you know, is it's a weaker market, so I'm grateful to leave and even get T1. And the other side of this is to ultimately look at the, where this market level held from before, because this, this level here was a really, really strong reaction from a point of control, which created a massive lift in price. Now they came down to fill the gap in here. And uh, really the concept between the way I trade or way we teach is you have a decision to make. Are you going to scalp the levels or are you going to hold for bigger positions? And it really just depends on your temperament. So today, what we do, we did in the classroom today is, um, you know, we what we did in the classroom today was we uh, we mapped out all the order flow levels, we mapped out all the auction levels, we mapped out all of the areas of interest, and then we just wait for the market to get to those areas and we just take trades. And you can see if we just look at every single one of those areas where I had participated, the S and P. Uh, I missed the top trade, which was a nice base hit. This one I got in on a volume divergence. I got first target. It was a very tight trade. And let's go back and show you the fill on this one. And the concept here is to show you what we're doing, right? So this was the first trade that I took here off of the, it was a counter directional reversal trade. Boom, just like that. And uh, the next trade up here, see this trade came up and hit one tick from the area. So this to me is considered hit. So I would not touch this on the retest. So this is what happened. They blew through and they, they, they came through on the retest. And as I said, that's, that's why I said I would not trade the retest. But this trade I missed. They came up and I really, really wish I would have had my order pending and I didn't. But that's just part of live trading. And, and hopefully you guys can respect that. But, uh, you know, this market, this market dropped heavy from here. And now it's coming back up to retest it. So this was a nice trade here. Um, the YM, I have not had a chance to get to my levels. The YM did not go anywhere today. So that's fine. The Russell... Um, the Russell had some really big trades, right? The Russell had some really big trades. The Russell moves quite fast. It's a faster market. Um, 
you know, it trends a lot. It's a trending market. And uh, so this one here hit. This one here hit. So base hit, two targets hits on that one. And uh, that's the difference between getting in on the first touch versus waiting for a rotation, right? There's nothing wrong with either way. It's how you choose to manage the position. It's your preference and it's your temperament for trade management. Um, we came, I waited for this all morning. So you're going to see I waited for this trade all morning. Boom, boom, boom. There was the fill. And I just took the first target on that. You say, well, it's not a really big trade. Well, it's a day trade. It's a scalp. So I'm not looking to be right about the direction. I'm not looking to be right about the entire market follow through. There's a lot of pressure in that, but there's not a lot of pressure in getting in and getting out and making some cash here, right? There's nothing wrong with that. And if the market wants to put in a bottom here and stop, that's a different story. But the difference between that type of a trader and this type of a trader, this trader just gets in and takes his money versus this trader is trying to be right about the bottom of the market. And hopefully this market turns around and proves them right. And the difference between that is how you trade your systems. And the concept of what I've been doing in the classroom is is trying to teach traders that it's not about being right about what the market's going to do. It's about being accurate with execution and making sure you take a profit, right? So the next trade here, you can see that this was a trade I caught the low on. It was a really, really great trade, actually. Um, you know, I caught this low right here on the volume level. And it's really important to have your volume levels mapped out. You can't ask for a better fill, <laughs> right? I got T1 and a T1 was here and T2 was up here, I believe. Yeah, I got out. And uh, so that was a nice trade. Um, I did end up taking the next long short. So the next short came up here. I spliced my orders between the levels because there was a volume level here and there was a volume level here. So I got in here. I took my first target here on the, the drop and then I got kicked out on my break even, which sometimes happens before the big drop happens. So that's a, just a preference on trade management is you know protecting the downside right away. If the market gives you the follow through, fantastic. If it doesn't, hey, at least you're protected. You can't take a loss on that trade, right? Uh, once you move to break even. They came back down to retest this level. You can see how strong the volume's holding here, but I'm very interested in actually trading down here. So the next trade plan for me is this. So I'm looking at actually splicing my orders again, and uh, we'll bring this down. Volatility on this market right now is uh, six ticks. So I'll keep it at a 10 tick stop. And uh, I'll splice my orders in here. And this will be, I'll look for six and look for 15. Uh, probably a little less. Try to get seven and 13, just like that. I try to get a one-to-one -one on the full position if I can. And uh, that way I can scale out, take some profits on the way out and uh, splice my orders. I'll keep it at... Uh, 15 contracts, keep it at 16, so it's an even eight and eight, just like that. So the thing about this is that these blue boxes are order flow levels. And this is what we did this morning is we came in here into crude oil and we mapped out order flow levels on a big time frame. That's the difference between what we're doing is we're actually trading order flow on high time frames. We're not relying on smaller time frame noise. I'm not really interested in trading smaller time frame noise. So if you're somebody that wants to learn how to trade order flow and volume levels with very high degree accuracy, um, you know, I'm, I'd really like to, uh, I'd really like to show you how to do that and we can definitely help you become a great trader doing so. Uh, if you like the video, uh, obviously it's a recap, some of the trades, some of the conditions, uh, got a chance to take uh, 500 on T1 on a Russell. Um, the difference is, is that when you scalp, you normally scalp with bigger size because you're trading with smaller stops and objectives. And, uh, when your levels trading, you're trading with bigger size. Uh, or so, so smaller size and bigger stops. So it just depends on how you choose to trade. We'll teach you both. And um, if you're not capitalized to say trade the full contracts, you can always trade the micros because the levels are the exact same. So that's always a good alternative as well. Um, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I uh, didn't get a chance to put recaps out over the last couple of weeks as much as I'd like to, mainly because we've been working on a lot of great content. We're updating our strategies courses. We're filming all new videos on all of our trading systems. So it takes a bit of time and we do appreciate your patience, but to rest assured, we got some really, really great things coming and I'm really, really excited. So uh, like the video, give me a thumbs up, ask a question, leave a comment, get social with us. And don't forget below this link, there's an opportunity to come join me in our classroom. Come learn how to make some cash and uh, learn how to manage risk and we'll help you become a great trader. Take care guys. And we'll see you in the class.